Welcome to the Secret Underground Laboratory Recovery and Salvage, where rude mechanicals do magic. Hello, I'm Bronze Age, Director of Secret Underground Laboratory Recovery and Salvage. And today on the bench, we have a very nice designer lamp that just doesn't work. Now this is a very nice lamp. The trunk here is solid alabaster. The base is uh, wood. It has an SPT2, which is the larger size cord. And uh, except for the fact that it doesn't work, it's a very nice lamp. Now I know that it's a designer lamp because there's a label right here that says so. This is a Gabby lamp. Gabby's not a person. That is an interior decor design company. They wholesale all of their items through uh, major retailers, department stores, and stuff like that. This amp is actually made in China, and as I said before, fairly upmarket. Nice stuff on it, despite the fact that the switches don't work. But what we see here is something that just puzzles people to this very day. Now, if you go on any Facebook group page or any other website about vintage lamps and collecting lamps and anything like that, the first thing you'll see is about a dozen or so people wanting to know who made my lamp, where did it come from, how old is it? And most of the time, there is simply no answer for that kind of question because that little paper label on the socket is the only ID this lamp ever had, or ever will have. So, for instance, if the uh, lamp ever gets rewired and the sockets get replaced, the label goes away. Give this adhesive on here, 50 or 60 years, it'll dry out, and someday somebody will be dusting the lamp and the whole thing peels off. And any trace of the original designer, where it came from, disappears. And it's been like that for 100 years or more. Now with the socket pulled apart and the interior exposed, we can see what the real problem here is. It's, so I pull on this, it doesn't make any noise. If I pull on a good one, we get a nice click. And that's basically when one of these pull chain sockets goes out. The little thing that makes the click breaks off and you've got no more light. I'm going to replace it with this uh, Leviton socket, which uh, made in Mexico, but uh, I'm still sure it's still pretty good. And uh, let's hope it's better than the uh, Chinese one that this uh, lamp came with. Now, since this is a designer lamp, I'm going to be careful to preserve all the uh, designer elements. I used my custom made pull chain socket chain removal tool to open up this little clevis just a little bit. Pull it down. This is kind of like picking a lock where you got to use both hands at the same time. But just pull the chain up and then we throw that one away. Putting the new chain or swapping it over to the new socket is pretty much the same thing. down putting it back together is always just a little trickier There we go. That's about the way it goes most times. Now is the part of the video where I give the same sermon that I always uh, recite when uh, wiring a lamp. In the United States, all 
cords used for lighting have one wide prong, one narrow prong. That's so they can only be plugged into the wall one way. On the lamp cord, one side has ridges, which you can feel, one side is smooth. The side with the ridges always goes to the silver terminal on your light socket, which goes to the shell. The smooth one goes to the copper or the brass colored screw, which goes through the switch and to the center. And that is for safety reasons. Now in this case, in this lamp, the cord comes up through the pipe and there's a junction here and the wire comes out white and black. But that's fairly easy to figure out. The white goes to the silver, the black goes to the brass. One last detail to note, these wires have been tinned, which means they started out as a wire with multiple strands like this, and then they were soldered so that when you put them underneath the screw, they don't splay out and get loose. That's a critical element in any lamp repair. Bronze Age from the Secret Underground Laboratory of Curve and Salvage. I thank you for sitting all the way through this video. If you found it informative, uh, please click the like button. I really appreciate it if you would subscribe. I put out a video about once a week, and uh, I hope to see you again next week.